This looks so good! Look at the details in the milk we got them! Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today let's talk about Sequator. So let me just show you the power of stacking. So this picture was did by a guy uh, on uh, isolation because of the COVID and the dude wanted to photograph the Milky Way anyway. So what he did is just stacked a bunch of photos forcing the Milky Way to show up through the light pollution. That That is mind blowing. Very fun as a project. Yeah, I when I saw this, I was like, what? I don't say this is a good idea because it's not designed to do this, but damn! I saw this video from Astro Backyard and that dude is amazing. Check his channel out, check the video that he made about Sequator. It's because of him that I know that, that this software exists. It's supposed to be simple, fast, and it's free! Funny enough, they have their website on Google website and a free version of that. Let's download the latest version. Very important is if it's not compatible with the RAW of your cameras, you can download the DNG converter from Adobe. I think it's free. Yeah, it's free. Let's open this guy and install it. So, extract all. It doesn't have an installation file. It's just, there we go, it looks pretty damn simple and it is. I'm gonna give it a huge challenge. This was actually a time lapse that I did for a future project. As you can see the ISO is 3200 with my uh, no, not that, no, this is the R6. I didn't do Milky Way yet with this camera. Mm. I did with that camera over there. The, the 6D, let's import a bunch of photos. Select all, so we have 79 photos. So, <laughs> a real challenge. So, let's go to this dude over here. It immediately, when you import, it asks what these images are. So, in my case, it's our images, okay? but you can also import noise images. Well, it will try to understand, to figure out what kind of noise that camera has and try to clean on the output. Yeah, you need to take a shot of a blacked out image with the second settings that you did with the stars, if I'm not mistaken. If I am mistaken, put it down below on the, on the comments because this is my first tacking, okay? And vignetting images, usually you just use the a tablet or a very bright screen and you take the picture of the whiteness and it will show up the vignetting so this software will correct it. The lens that I did for this photo I can actually show you with the Sanwan Wanyang. I bought it expressly to photograph time lapse of the Milky Way and the Milky Way of course. What you usually would put it's put your something really bright in front and transmit the vignette information. So uh, another thing that I'm thinking about is probably uh, stop shooting. If you want to make stacking, stop shooting on the maximum aperture because the lens the, lose a little bit of thinness on the crazy aperture of 2.8 or even more. So reduce to f4, f6, do your tests, uh, but that will add a little bit of thinness not, I'm not talking about that depth field, I'm talking the in-focus areas will be sharper. Depending on the lens, usually there is some sweet point on the aperture, so... And you have to balance how much time you want to be there shooting, or you can be there shooting with... Uh, I am getting... I, I'm, I'm rumbling. Now, the really great thing about this kind of software that you can't do in Photoshop and well, you could, but it would be a hell of a, a lot of work, is that the distortion, for example, this is a 14 millimeters, there is some distortion. Even though some brands say that it doesn't have distortion, it always have distortion, okay? So wide angles have big ass distortion. That will align the stars compensating with the distortion. That is mind boggling and really cool. Let's press okay, it's start images. It looked like it did load. Now, as you can see here, it has some noise. I'm gonna jump back to bridge so you guys can figure out this, how many noise this image has. Like 
a lot. The dark area is not that bad, but you can see there is some red dots because I'm not doing the long exposure noise reduction activated on the camera because if I take, a, for example, this image, it's 30 seconds. If I take 30 seconds of a photo, it will calculate to reduce the noise for 30 seconds. So that's not good for time lapses. So here is the image, the base image. So this image is just the base, that means that it's a preview of what you are working on. You have the output, of course you need to uh, do the output, output, so double tap and let's one, test. Uncompressed TIFF or JPEG, so uncompressed TIFF, so 16 bits of uncompressed TIFF, so you have a lot of room to editing after that. And it's TIFF, it's compatible with uh, Affinity, uh, Gimp, whatever, okay, so. Uh, and Photoshop, of course. Down here we have accumulation. If I click, you have aligned stars, of course. I, if you want to make some star trails, here we go. Freeze ground. A, a good idea, you should try several settings to see what you get better. So there you go. Now, selective, okay, let's region, full area, no. So I can select bone and line, so I can say from up that line is the sky, no. We can select a gradient, no. Let's select an irregular mask. So this, my friend, is the Milky Way. Right click, it erases. Left click, it adds. So this is all the sky, this is all stars over here, yes. Dynamic range of, of, let's see everything off and automatic and see what we're gonna get. Remember, this is 79 images to export. Let's see how fast this thing is. Yep, it's using the CPU. Okay, it's using a lot the C disk. This is the, the pictures are on the B disk. For some reason, it's using a lot the C SSD. It's reaching 100% often the CPU, that means it's been a pretty damn fast and it is using a lot of memory, 16 gigabytes of memory, so yeah. Jesus Christ, it, it, now I am noticing it. it's doing a bunch of temporary files like Okay, that's why, that's why the C drive, it's overclocking. Let me just press on it and see. So this is a, a fast SSD. It is in the write speed at 300 megabytes per second or more. If you want to stacking be way faster, get an SSD. On this case, NVMe. Well, no, two minutes and six seconds, completed successfully. Let's check out the images then. It still has some noise. Long exposure noise, but it has no noise whatsoever. But damn, the, the, this image is clean. Unfortunately, it's way too dark. So if I edit this in camera raw, Oh, it's almost everything in the shadows. There is nothing in the middle. And let's redo this again, okay? But this time, auto brightness on. And I guess this time around 10 seconds faster, okay? But look better, looking better. Let's open this uh, two image in camera raw. So I know that a lot of you like Lightroom, but I am a camera raw dude. Are you a camera raw dude as well? So there is some fog on this image. It just looked like they just cranked the, the exposure. Okay, I will try to copy the, the Instagram by just pushing the exposure, something like that. Actually, the auto exposure did something more than just push the exposure. The auto exposure, it's doing something interesting. So the Milky Way, as you can see, and I go back to this one, it's way better looking. There is more stats to do. I, I'm impressed because I didn't hope that stacking would be this fast and this far. So dynamic range, 
I am afraid of dynamic range. Sometimes it doesn't work well. Let's press start. No. So it's not going faster, but goddamn is fast. I think I am doing a mistake because my screen is not HDR. But I don't think it's talking about that. It's talking about recovering how much details it can possibly do on the highlights and on the shadows and try to put as much information inside. Not really a screen ex uh, aspect. Uh, let me just check out this. Yeah, exactly what I was saying. Way better. Yeah, th there is way more details so here in the Milky Way. Not much, not much to be impressed. Let's turn that on and see if we'll get rid of that noise over there. That, if it can, that's awesome. Do -do 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 -do. I talk one second more than before. That means the noise thing, the... God damn! Don't get me wrong, there is some noise there, but comparing with the other, the long exposure noise, it's completely disappeared. As easily as that. And this noise that it has, it's so easily to clean that it's mind boggling. Worse is the, the Milky Way, dude, it's awesome. Yeah, okay, okay, that it's looking so good, damn. I want to edit this image, but let's continue with the test. You know what? Let's go full in. Yes, on. Enhanced stars light. On. Time lapse. No, I don't know. That. Okay. Ooh, it's getting there. Ooh, it's getting there. Why it's so different? The black sits all the way down and well it's trying to do something weird that thing so bad let's do the this one off still there is something it's not enhance the starlight enhance starlight on reduce light pollution off let's run it it says start but it should say run like run it's so fast big mm. Okay, test number seven. Yes, that was the problem. Light test, the light pollution is off. So the best thing to, to avoid the light pollution is move away from the light pollution. Now, this is the best looking image that I got until now. Now, I want to do something cool. I'm gonna leave all the settings as is, and now I'm gonna activate this pixel thing on. Now, I am deducing that I have to redo all these tests when I use a different camera, different ISO. Remember that the 6D has 20 megapixels, so reducing that to less 4, it will be 5 megapixels. Way more than enough to Instagram. I am doing the math right? Okay, let's see what we get. So the idea of... It doesn't make that much difference. We have way less visible noise though. This stacking thing is mind blowing. I'm gonna edit just uh, this image, so this is, will be just a really fast editing. So, I am planning to make a video tutorial only focus on noise reduction. So, if you want to see all of this in detail, well, subscribe and put that bell to some use. It's mind-blowing! Let's compare the stacked image with the other photos that I did before. As you can see, I have three of them. So, this one is something that I talked about recently on the, my last video. This one is just an image edit just from one photo. That is the stacked one. As you can see, the stack one, beautiful! So many details, god damn, look at this! So there is a little bit of star trailing, 
but I don't think it's the fault of the sequator. I think that it is the fault of 30 seconds of exposure. Although it's 40 millimeters, it should work properly, but it always gets a little bit of star trailing. I should reduce a little bit the shutter speed if I know that I'm gonna do some stocking. But honestly, damn, that's impressive. You can see the individual colors of each star, like yellow and bluish and wow, that's impressive. And I guess 3200 ISO, it's excellent for one shot, but it's not the best thing to make some stacking because you lose, you lose a little bit of a detail. For example, this is Jupiter and it loses a little bit of the color of Jupiter. So let's compare it with one shot. Damn. Okay, forget that I show you this image. Let's compare it with this one. And this one is actually is two pictures combined. One made at uh, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., something like that. And another one made around 2 a.m. in the morning. So the Milky Way on the top and the landscape on the bottom. Just to feed a little bit my ego, this picture went the uh, astrophotography here in the Azores um, third place. So yeah, yeah, I'm pretty damn proud. You can see photographing with a blue light, you get way better results that the other image can't really compete with. Now, I think the problem is, to be honest, is that this image is 16-bit. I would like to see a paint version. Come on, Sequator. Dude, uh, how you? what's your name? So, hi, Ray, you? Hi, Ray, you. Please make a paint version which you can export a DNG 32-bit raw file. That would be great because if you notice here, you see, this was supposed to be green, okay? And I tried to uh, color balance the, the heck out of it, and I cannot, because it's not really raw. It has some room to edit, but it doesn't have the whole capability of doing so. No, no uh, it doesn't look natural, okay? 16-bit is great, 32-bit would be even better, but that is raw. It's a raw file, so I don't know if it's really possible, but or you have to pay some commission to Adobe or something like that. A paid version with that, I would put some money on that. I am paying for the subscription for Photoshop, and that that is would be even better. Don't do a don't do a subscription. Do one payment. Please, for the whole community sake. I am mind boggling how impressive this image is. Now, I am wondering, should I replace this foreground with this, with this one? I think I'm gonna do it. This looks so good. Look at the details in the milk we got them. And the noise, it's nothing, nothing. And there we go, the power of stacking with Sequator. It's fast, it's simple, and it gets really good results. My, my mind is mind blown. For now on, you, you guys are gonna see me do some stacking. There we go, so drop a like if you learned something, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I am Miguel, until next time, see ya.